There we go. You should not be... You should not start with your engine running. Let's see, is there a way for me to change that? Uh, I'm not sure. We'll see. Open that up. Hello, ladies and gents. Welcome back to the channel. Um, we're going to do a stream this evening in Norway. Let's just bring tip tanks off, like so. Change up the aircraft configuration. Okay. Right. Let's go bring in some weather. Let's see what's happening here. Uh, let's Delta, uh, Echo Hotel Victor Delta, I believe is the name of the game, Delta Echo Hotel Victor Delta, that is correct, connect. And we should have some volumetric lighting. Hello, Ubison. Good evening. Ub... Ubison. Ubison. Apologies if I get your name wrong there. Yeah, we should have some... Uh oh, well, there is volumetric lighting over there. But not over where I am. Ow. Hello, Charles. Good evening. So we're going to fly from Torp, Sonnefjord, a uh, place that is uh, near and dear to my heart. And outside it is 15 degrees Celsius. Well, that's quite nice. Uh, okay. Let's try that again. Okay. Map. Ooh. Ooh, temperature 12, visibility 5 statute miles, clouds broken at 600 feet, variable variable at 15 knots, uh, 140 to 200. Ooh, interesting. Are the ch clouds going to change? Eller Gugvel. Gugvel. Was that good? Good. Is it goo? Go go often? Go often? Go often? How about this, Bjorn? You say you text. Oh, go go often is da is Danish. Okay, Bjorn, if you just um, message in the chat in Norwegian, I'll just sit here and try and pronounce it. So, um, okay, we're getting a twenty. I have always, always, always had bad frame rates at this airport, regardless of my settings. This is not a nat This is not a native uh, prepared 3D version four um, airport. So forgive me if that is just wrong. So uh, what we're going to do first is we're just going to do our pre-flight. So let's open the door so we can get out. Uh, this is going to be another. Where's the handle? I can't see in the darkness. There it is. This is going to be another full stream. So I'm going to... There you go. Uh, this is going to be another full stream, guys. So I'm going to be doing uh, the entire f um, process as far as I can to the best of my ability from start to finish. Uh, shift 8. All right. Let's get outside. And wiggle that flap and that is excellent that's nice and tight since last time it's fine linkages are good check the condition L looks okay of course this is this is the aircraft that I was flying yesterday in North America so actually there shouldn't have been much change since yesterday and it should it was fine then yeah 
Uh, but it's good to just go around and check this again. Uh, doing good in Danish and Norwegian. Very bra, very bra. Uh, right. Nose. Yeah, fuel is good on both sides. Should be fine. And I can see the pito. Actually, let's just. Let's just, for the sake of it. Oh, come on. Let's just, for the sake of it. Okay, let's, for the sake of it, turn on the pito heat. Which is. That one there. Okay. So let's. Oh, my word. Yeah, so let's do that and then. Yeah, okay, so it's hot, right. We get the picture. Right, let's go back to our... Oh, I went and screwed it up now, didn't I? I'll just click on the different spots. Okay, we, we ascertained that that was good. Check clean condition. The linkages are okay. No wiggle at all. That's good. Check that the, pe the static source valves are unblocked. They all look a little bit of wiggle there, but that's okay. And then finally checking in there. Okay. Okay. Okay, upon entering the cabin, pre-flight has been completed. Passengers are briefed. Seat belts, let's just close the door. Uh, seat belts, shoulder harnesses are on. Flaps are up. There we go, close the thing. Uh, flaps are up, radios are off. Circuit breakers are in. Uh, all electrical switches are off. Autopilot's off, rotating beacon on. Uh, yes, it was on, actually, because we were... We could hear it rotating, so uh, fuel selector tank, fuel selectors are desired tank. Um, gear switch is down, and yes, it is. Okay, uh, we should have turned. Okay, mixture is rich, prop is full, throttle is full. Let's turn on some lights first, for goodness sake. Oh, there's a fan? I didn't... Overhead fresh air control. There's a fan! Can you imagine that? Oh, that's what I want. That's what I want. And that one there as well. Excellent. Right. Ooh, frame rates. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, okay, that's fine. Okay, no one's screaming at me in chat at the moment. I can... Ooh, yeah, frame rates. Sorry about frame rates. They're just going to be a bit laggy while I'm on the ground here. It, it's just, that's just the way of it. Uh, let's just double check that ATC is still around. Yes, okay. That's good. So we've got full, pretty much full uh, coverage of TORP today. We're going to fly just a quick flight from TORP to... Uh, not totten. So, okay, mixture, rich, prop, full, throttle, full, attentional pilots, that's somewhere very far away. Okay, that's Manchester. Um, cow flaps are open, that's fine. Battery and alt switches on, check gear lights are green, that is correct. Uh, auxiliary pump is on until fuel flow goes into the green. Okay, we've done this before, I'm not going to... There we go. I was just watching the fuel flow meter there. Throttle cracked to fourth of an inch, which is kind of hard in the sim world, but I'm going to put that on about 12%. Okay, and mags and start switch is on. Okay, the rotating beacon is on. The nav lights are on at the moment, which, to be fair, don't technically need to be on until after we've started the engine, but that's okay. 
Uh, right, clear prop. And there's no one around at the moment. Come on, baby. Oh, come on. Uh, you fly in Norway a lot. Do you uh, live there or just like flying in Norway? I just like flying in Norway. I've uh, I've been to this airport for some freelance work uh, a number of times, and I just I just uh, really like the country. I love the people. They're very hospitable and friendly, and yeah, yeah. Um, and I've tried to learn a little bit of Norwegian, but um, but yeah. I'm probably going to go on a jump seat of a Norwegian 737 at some point as well to do some regional routes with a friend so in real life so that'll be that'll be fun. Right, on to actually trying to start this stupid thing. Okay, evidently oh, I'm just going to pull the Pull the mixture out ever so slightly, see if that'll help clear the engine. It's 15 degrees, it's 14 degrees Celsius outside. Come on. Seriously, okay. I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna go to the maintenance hangar. Okay, battery low voltage. Really? Let's recharge the battery artificially here. And the st and I destroyed a bit of the starter. Okay, I'm just gonna do that and try again. For goodness sake, I have no idea what I was doing wrong. I'll get it one day. Malte, last uh, last time I I said I don't like the Bonanza design, but I see I've seen more and more of the last two days, and I love this aircraft and buying it tomorrow. Very nice. Uh oh, oh, oh. Here we go. There's a Vatsim default A321 that's just just come in. Let's put headphones on, and um, we've got the uh, GTN 750 and 650, and I'm just going to put that on traffic with a range of two nautical miles. Okay, so while the engine warms up, our cylinder head temperature, of course, is pretty low. Oil temp is good. Oil pressure is good. Amps are good. Um, fuel is good for both tanks and we don't have any tip tanks of course in this version so while we just uh, warm up we're connected to the sim that's fine just warming up Okay, so target altitude is 3,000. That should be fine. Let's just go to VATSIM. Refresh. Okay. So we're flying TORP to Nortodden. So it's not a very long flight at all, but it is IFR and it should provide for us uh, beyond. Aviation trivia. Did you know that the SES route from Copenhagen to New York for decades was called Sky 911 until 911. Right. Ooh, can you imagine coming coming into the New York airspace after 911 saying Sky 911? <laughs> that uh, makes sense why they changed that. Um, okay, so let's bring up the the flight one, and let's start looking at our flight plan. 
we could do a, a procedural departure um, from Torp, but um, we need to, it would need to be somewhere like somewhere to the north, maybe Dromon. Uh, is there a Dromon st star? No, or Sid? Sorry, um, I'm not sure. And this is Bomgu and Baki. The Baki two goal. They're there to the south, though. I'm pretty sure. So uh, what I'm going to do? Hmm. You never know. Ooh. Ooh, no, that's a bit too far out, though. That's a bit too far. Uh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna go di out direct. Oh, okay. We'll go from here. We'll go up to... to there, say there and then something like that um, cancel back map uh, let's go back flight plan okay so first point is uh, T U F T E C T U uh, F T E C no okay that doesn't exist great um, let's just say uh, D218 Victor. D218 Victor. Again, no match is found. What is what is it for if it can't find waypoints? Okay, I'm going to go um, SKI then. SKI, yes. No, and each single one is over 3,000 nautical miles away. Okay, wow. This is not starting out well, is it? Let's go TOR. Torp. No, we can't do that. Ento. Let's just go straight ENNO. And then from there, well, actually, let's delete that. Uh, remove. How do I get this GPS? Is it included? Uh, it is not included in the A2A package. This is called the Flight One GTN 750. Uh, it's the it's the it's the GTN 750 uh, by Flight One. If you Google Flight One GTN 750, you'll find it, and you it's a separate purchase and it, it's basically a, a retrofit. It fits into most GA A2A aircraft and a number of other things as well. It's a fantastic tool when it works and it usually does except for right now because I'm streaming. Uh, right. <sighs> There's not that many waypoints out here to be fair. Um, hmm. Yeah, do you know what? I'm just going to go straight to ENNO. But then at ENNO, I'm going to go, uh, not VCALC, sorry, progress. Uh, approach is going to be at ENNO. Uh, lock 20? What ones are? It depends what the wind is doing. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. Locked, lock 1, 2. Actually, can I make that the RNAV? Yeah, that's it. I can make that the RNAV load approach. There we go. So actually from here I'm going direct to the beginning of that approach. So that's that's okay. And then you activate the approach. I think... Wow. Uh, from... Yeah. 
yeah, and then you act. You should be able to activate the approach from there. We'll 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 see what it's like when we get there. So, let's just zoom in. And it has ground charts as well, of course, which is really nice. So, um, and that will give us. Actually, we'll take off. Yeah, we're going to take off uh, south. We're going to do a southerly departure. So, uh, hi Peter, how's it going uh, on the other side of the water? Yeah, Vince, going well, thank you. Um, Fifty-five euros, GG. Yeah, well, it's it's it's. Once you've got it, you've got it, and actually, once you've got it, you really, really for IFR flying and small aircraft, it's really nice. Um, so I can't ever, I can't ever stand those tiny little G GPSs that sucker onto the window. I just, I can't work those. I can't figure them out. Um, anyway, okay. So our wait, our flight plan is essentially. Um, let's just go and have a look at that. That's G it's basically just direct, so I'm going to put that into my flight plan here. Uh, Ento to E, E N N O, IFR departure time seven eight. F say uh, uh, seven. Oh, what is it now? What is it in Norway? In Norway, it's plus one, so it's eight fifty seven. So it's nine. It's about nine p.m. Nine, uh, ten, eleven. This is twenty-one. This is uh, twenty-one, ten. Flight time, literally half an hour. No more than that. I've got enough fuel for everything else. Cruise altitude, I'm going to say is five thousand feet. Uh, cruise speed, I'm going to say is two hundred knots. Uh, e N N O direct to. Um, oh, sorry. E N T O direct. E N N O. Uh, far fly plan. Nice and easy for him. Okay, map. Okay, right. So what I have to do now is I'm going to call the tower. Just turn the volume of the aircraft down ever so slightly because I want to be able to hear him when I talk. So Ento 8 is uh, 119.07 so let's put that in uh, 119.07 enter oh yes I have to actually <laughs> that was 119.07 wasn't it? Hello? I am live on COM1. Avionics are on. Did... Let's go over to the tower, 118.65. I'm not... Why am I not getting... Oh, come on. Why am I not getting those frequencies? Oh, come on. Why am I not getting those frequencies? Use the top GPS. Ah, uh, that's why. <laughs> I'm so used to having the 720 that I put. I thought the 720 GPS. I thought this was COM1, but this is actually COM1. It's the other way around. Okay. Nice, nice catch, Vince. Thanks for that. Yeah. Okay. One nineteen oh seven. One one nine oh seven. And active. There you go.
Okay, so information Bravo Q and H uh, 2988, which translates to uh, 1012. So that's uh, Q and H 1012. Information Bravo Q and H 1012 uh, and runway 18. Um, also, um, let me just pause track hour and go close my, my window blinds because it's pitch black outside. Ah, oh, right. And we have a ton of fuel, so it's fine that we're burning it away. And uh, let's just unpause track I R. Uh, hello, unknown. What's up? Uh, just doing a, a Norwegian flight at night, IFR. Okay, so now we've got that. Let's go over to tower, which is uh, one eighteen six five. Okay, now we're on tower. Let's tune approach as well. One thirty four oh five. Enter. So that's in the standby when we need it. Okay, so we are ready to transmit to tower. With we've got our IRR five flight plan uh, filed. We have. Let's just uh, let's go one eight. Let's pull up the charts while we have them because we're flying IFR at night for TORP and we can get the true runway heading. For runway 18 is uh, 177. So let's just set that. Like so. Okay, track 267. So let's put that on the track. Uh, that is 267? Are you sure? 267? Oh, that's, that's, yeah, sorry, that's where I'm looking. I was looking for that track. Um, I'm not sure what that is. That's roughly, that's roughly something like that. What I can do is I can go menu and uh, change uh, user fields and I want to change that to um, let's see uh, tuned time stop descent current time track uh, track angle error no, that's not going to help me. I want... Oh, never mind. I didn't want... I don't want that either. I want the... For this, for the top left, I want... Um, bearing to waypoint, distance to waypoint, desired track. En route safe altitude, en route ETA to destination, time, total ground speed. I need wind speed. Uh, wind speed and angle for the top left. Timer, timer, turn, da, 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 da. wind speed and direction for the top left. Thank you. And I saw it earlier on. If I go to the track and they go all the way to the top, I I thought it's desired, desired track. There we go. Desired track is 303. Thank you very much. So if I set 303 with the needle, that should be our track. So just trying to set as much as this, um, as much of this up as possible before. Uh, before we call tower, just so we're, we're most prepared. Um, okay. Uh, is the Bonanza worth the money? Um, it depends. It depends, uh, unknown. If you have the Comanche already, the Bonanza feels quite similar to the Comanche in its speed and cross-country capabilities. So if you already have the Comanche and you like the Comanche, um, I'm not sure if you would buy the Bonanza, but then the Bonanza, it feels different from the Comanche as well in its own way. It, I mean, the flight characteristics are different. Um, but I haven't. I've only flown this once properly, and um, I'm about to fly it tonight in an IFR condition with the G10 750s. So that's going to give me a bit of a different feel as well. I'm going to fly without tip tanks. I've changed the engine model, so 
there's 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 more customization to this, I think, than uh, previous A to A aircraft. It's all, it's up to you. Best thing that I could say to you, uh, unknown, is just just watch other people's uh, live streams like you're doing now. Um, get a feel for it. See if you like it. If if it's something that you still after, you know, you know, weeks and weeks or months and months, if you still really yearn for it, then go and pick it up. It's up to you. Uh, but there's no there's no there's no harm in watching other people's streams to see what what opinions you make of it. I think. Okay, so we're going to call the tower. Uh, we are Delta Echo Hotel Victor Delta with information Bravo with uh, Q and H one zero one one zero one two, requesting IFR departure to Notodden. So that's who we are. Uh, let me just let me just pause the the uh, sim audio so that I can make a contact to the tower. Torp Tower, good evening, uh, Delta Echo Hotel Victor Delta. Hello? I was able to pr See, yeah, everything's turned on. Let me just try that again. Torp Tower, good evening, uh, Delta Echo Hotel Victor Delta. One eighteen six five. Yeah, it's correct. As long as he hasn't tuned off in the last sixty seconds. Torp Tower is one eighteen six five. Yeah. Try one more time and then I'll go over to approach and see if he's around. Torp Tower, good evening, uh, Delta Echo Hotel Victor Delta. Double check this out where everything's working. It was yesterday. Uh, microphone device, direct sound microphone, Logitech gaming headset. And output device is the headset as well. That should be okay. Let's just go over to approach and see if he's there. Okay. Uh, Torp approach, good evening. Uh, Delta Echo Hotel, Victor Delta on the ground. Uh, can't uh, talk to the tower, he's not responding. Delta Echo Hotel, Victor Delta, first approach, stand by. Thank you. Right, he's just going to see if he can shake the tower controller up a bit. <laughs> see if he's awake. Could be asleep, you know. Tower controllers uh, have lives too. I used to work uh, on Mildenhall Air Force Base, and I used to sometimes do the night shift. And the tower controller between between you know 11 to 6 a.m. in the morning had. So, um, Victor, just, uh, you can attend the call tower now, uh, 118, just we'll Okay, thanks. Okay, back. Uh, Torp Tower, Delta Echo Hotel, Victor Delta. Delta Echo Hotel, Victor Delta, go ahead. Uh, Top Tower, good evening. Uh, Delta Victor Delta with information Bravo, QNH 1012, uh, requesting IFR clearance to Notodden as filed. Yeah, Delta Victor Delta, confirm that you are able to fly VFR reporting points. Uh, currently unable because it's night. I can uh, change the time the time of day uh, for Delta Victor Delta. Delta Victor Delta is your choice. Okay. Sure. I mean, I can't do VFR at night time, so. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, no problem. One second, just uh, changing the sim to daytime. <laughs> I've never asked. I I've never asked, been asked by a tower controller if I can do VFR at nighttime. But at least it means you get to see this all in the daytime, so, you know. Okay, uh, Delta Victor Delta is uh, ready to stand by for VFR clearance uh, to the west. Guess we're going VFR. Back cleared for your control over to the west via Fox River, Dab Z, the Lawson. 3,000 feet or below, Squawk 0771. That is uh, VFR departure via Foxen and uh, Vidron and uh, uh, 2,000 feet or below Squawk 0771 for Delta Victor Delta. Delta Victor Delta, we correct the information like can H101 please start to approve. And that's information Mike QNH1012 for Delta Victor Delta, thanks. Okay, information Mike just changed and he just... Delta Victor Delta, confirm startup approved. Uh, startup approved, thanks, uh, Delta Victor Delta. And he's given me my startup clearance, but I already started up like five minutes ago just so that I could turn on my avionics and get my f flight, my route planned in that he'd now just binned, so there we go. Now he gave me uh, exit the airspace via Foxen, I think it was, and then uh, Vidron, I think. So I'm going to have to go and see where on earth he's actually just sending me. Um, uh, let's see, reference, noise abatement, SID. No, there. I don't think he's not. There's Larvik, Voxen, via Voxen. Okay, I'm just going to ask if he can put that in chat for me. This is the way Vatsum goes, guys, on stream. Like, it just never... It never works the way you want it to. The, I mean, your plan, however carefully laid, it just doesn't work. So I'm all of a sudden VFR. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, but there we go. Um, that A3... Okay, no problem. Uh, oh my goodness, what are those Scandinavian words? Oh. Mm, um, uh, Bjorn, help! <laughs> uh. Um, focus rod, F focus rod, then uh, Vidralsen, I think that was. So if I go here, where Google AIP Norway and go to Ev Aventer. Okay, Google, ah. Uh, uh, sent you a link in Discord. Okay, thanks for that. I'm going to just quickly open Discord. This is a very uh, chill stream, guys. Um, I, I will say, I will say. Um, <laughs> it's always a chill stream here. You, you should expect that from me. Um, recruiting robot hamsters. What on earth? Okay, thank you, Vince, for your very timely. And then click on uh, aviators, you said? Uh, and go to Av Avenor? Oh, Avenor.no? Nope. Uh, Aerodrome obstacle, let's see, standard departure chart, routes, instruments, 
that's not going to help me there. Uh, standard arrival routes instruments that's on our visual approach chart. Hopefully that can help. Boom, uh, boom, stop. Osram. Malamor. Svenna Lighthouse Vasser. Oh, there's Vid Vidrosen. There we go. A Vokasthrod and Vidrosen. Okay, so it's basically a, 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 a right hand turn. Ah, right. As a right hand turn, 180 degrees is if I'm doing a uh, right hand circuit. And then on the downwind, turn left from Vokasthrod. Uh, it looks like a train station, actually, and then uh, into Vidrosen. Okay, so actually, Vidrosen, is that. Is that a point on the... Is that a point on... We're learning things, guys. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm just wondering if that's a point on, the, on here that I can see. Bapto. Uh, Svastad. Is that a little bit too far? It could be. Uh, that's just on the edge of the zone. So, oh, okay. It's just on the edge here. There we go. Vidrosen. Okay. Okay, so actually it's just around right turning out to there. All right. So it's uh, T0916 roughly. Okay. All is, all is clear now. Okay. Woo! Use Plan G and search for the town. Yeah, now now I know exactly where it is. I can actually I actually know where it is. Um, should be on the edge of the controlled zone. Oh, for goodness' sake! Okay, it should be up here. It's kind of hard to see on Plan G, so I'm not going to bother on Plan G. I'm just going to um, I'm going to go off, I'm going to go off the GTN because I know I can see where that is. It's actually. Zoom out. Yeah. It's up there. It's up there. I know what that is. Okay. Um, yep, I'm good. Oh, ooh, hello. Hello. So cute. Little 152. Um, right. Okay. Uh, Torp Tower, Delta, Victor Delta, ready for taxi. Delta, Victor Delta, taxi, we three, Biscuit two, Charlie, Yankee, two, holding point, runway one eight, cross runway three six. Uh, whiskey three. Uh, it's, it's whiskey three, uh, blah blah blah. I'm afraid I missed the f uh, beginning of the transmission. Could you uh, say again for uh, Delta Victor Delta? Delta Victor Delta, taxi whiskey three, whiskey two, Charlie Yankee to holding point eight cross runway three six. That is taxi whiskey three, whiskey two. Charlie, Yankee, and uh, hold for runway 18 and cross uh, runway uh, 36 for Delta Victor Delta. Cool. Okay, he seems to have bought that. 
<laughs> so let's then go to uh, let's give ourselves uh, f not forgetting the squawk uh, 0771 enter and we shouldn't be on standby let's change that from standby to uh, on like so uh, enter okay right so taxi radios on transponder is on alt uh, actually let's just double check that's on alt is that an option uh, altitude reporting on alt enter yes um, heading indicator was set landing gear indicator is green radios atis yeah I got the atis parking brake release and test the brakes on initial roll brakes seem to be fine and off we go right, let's just turn on taxi light and the nav lights now that we're moving okay so that right there I believe is whiskey 3 uh, whiskey 2 is further down uh, but we need to turn whiskey 3 and cross runway uh, 36 just have a look on the exterior exterior of the Bonanza always looks beautiful actually I like the look of it without the wing tanks I don't like the wing tanks visually as much as uh, I, I like it without wing tanks I think it looks better okay yeah and the, I'm sorry about the frames guys t down to 12 frames it depends on where I'm looking at the airfield um, it can be really bad and then it can be fine again and that is purely the fact that the scenery is not optimized for, for V4 at all um, in fact it's not even optimized for prepared 3D version 3 it's just it's like prepared 3D version 2 I think and yeah but I still love it and there's no other Norwegian torp scenery that is any good at all so Okay, so from here, cross over to Charlie. But now that we're on the active, uh, ooh, and now that I'm on the active, I want to turn the strobe on. Oh, crap. I did just... That was me being sp smart, for goodness sake. How did that happen? I went down the wrong one. Stupid. And he's going he's gonna to tell me off now. I went whiskey three he meant this whiskey 3 not that whiskey 3 why are there two whiskey 3's why are there two whiskey 3's on this chart that is not my fault I I am gonna hold my hands up and say I was not at fault there I looked on the sign and actually said on the sign whiskey 3 so okay, I'm going to turn left on the Yankee maybe he meant me meant for me to do this I don't know that's him Okay, once we get off, we'll be out of the way of this horrible, horrible frame lags. Let's right, turn left here. Have a lovely flight, but got to go now. Okay, Vince, thank you for joining. Thank you for the uh, the help back there, Vince. Uh, hey, Peter, uh, how much longer are you streaming? Uh, Lewis, I'll be streaming for roughly the next half hour at least. You know me, I'm usually, a, you know, a short video for me is usually an hour long, so... How long have I been doing this already? Um, already been streaming for four, 50 minutes already, and I'm only just taxiing. So that gives you an idea. Um, I'll be streaming for, for... Give me another hour, oh, 45 minutes, Lewis. I'll be on. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm guessing. Oh, right near the pop. All right, you're here. I'm here at 888 Victor Papa, by I do like the Norwegian accents, I just wish that Vatsim had a codec that could actually make, you know. He said uh, not above 2,000 feet, so I'm going to have to bring that down to 2. Um, and of course, now that I have the GTN, well, now I'm now I'm doing VFR, for goodness sake. He, he didn't like the fact that I did IFR, so 
Uh, what I thought was going to be a GTN 750 nighttime IFR in the in the Bonanza has become uh, a VFR. So, but that's fine. I can do VFR as well. Nice the uh, nice Ryanair over there. Like old times. I I did uh, the 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 top the top uh, plane spotting videos I've done. Actually, the real life ones are from uh, the tree stand, which I think is even on the scenery somewhere. It's over in the car park in the corner by the fence um, so yeah there's that okay let's just double check uh, that everything is going good uh, lights as required uh, we have tested our brakes on the on the run-up uh, brakes hold fuel quantity checked uh, select make sure that it's on the right tank it is currently still mixture set throttle 1700 rpm Instruments check, check the instruments, and then check the mags, and then cycle props. So we're going to do that quickly, just before takeoff. Um, so, and I really like the fact that the the A to A notes or the pilot notes on the side incorporate the checklists um, just here. That's always very helpful um, because it means that you don't have to constantly be tabbing in and out of. Uh, the simulator to see the the checklist in the PDF. Um, I'm going to set flaps to about 10 degrees. That always helps a little bit. Um, I have noticed I I have noticed that the Bonanza takeoff speed feels um, faster than most other GA aircraft that A2A have released so far because um, the last couple of takeoffs I've done so far in the Bonanza. I felt a bit of a, a shake and a shudder on the initial takeoff and I think that's due to being close to the stall speed because I've been pulling up at like 90 knots and uh, um, I did I did read the uh, the checklist on on the the V speeds um, and I didn't see anything out of the ordinary so I may have just caught myself out slightly I've only got myself uh, weight is under three thousand pounds so I'm I'm a little bit on the light side, well I am kind of on the light side at the moment uh, compared to what uh, a heavier load would feel like in the Bonanza so uh, we'll just have to see how that is. Uh, it was about this spot actually on the airfield in real life uh, I was in a DA-40 doing a in a circuit at Torp one day last summer and a Ryanair stopped right around here on the taxiway because a black cat crossed the the, the taxiway and he and he called to the he called to the the ATC and said uh, uh, sorry we've stopped on the taxiway because of a black cat and he's not in a hurry to get out of the way and that was that was a Ryanair seven three seven that was saying that and actually that is that should be in my um, that should be in my aviation cinematography or some random. Let's just go to my YouTube channel and you should be able to see that um, video. Uh, yes. Torp uh, uh, Torp Sonleyford Airport Wildlife. If you go to that video, you'll see uh, the video that I'm uh, the, the instance I'm referring to. Um, okay. So, approaching the holding point, uh, we've got flap set to 10, and we do have our um, our ADF, we, we do have our GTN set, uh, set up correctly, and you can see that now we're on the right hand side of the magenta line, that's actually showing correctly, but because he's now turned us to a VFR, um, there's really probably not that much that I'm going to need from that. I'm the heading indicator is the one thing that's more important in VFR than uh, than the GTN at this point. Except I'm going to use the GTN as I depart the airspace. No, Delta Victor Delta, line up runway one eight. Line up runway one eight, Delta Victor Delta. Okay, there is the sign. Uh, we're coming off Yankee onto uh, runway one eight. Uh, so just crossing the the important line now. I had the strobe on by accident ever since I crossed the, the threshold last time which was a bit stupid but there we go. Uh, I've just turned on the landing lights so we've got our lights uh, as required. Flaps are set, seat belts are up, Let's seat belts are fastened, uh, let's go. Uh, actually he's not, 
he's just cleared us straight onto the runway. So, well, I sh to be fair, I should have done the run up while I was uh, at the on stand. So that isn't that's more my fault. Um, okay, so in position. Okay, before takeoff, uh, controls free and correct. Fuel t selector is on the desired uh, tank. Let's put the fuel pump on. Uh, engine gauges check. Uh, yep, they're all in the green except the amps. Just give that a knock. The amps. Still, their temperatures on the low side, but the North oil is okay. Cleared for takeoff runway 18 Delta Victor Delta. Okay, prop in, engine gauge is checked, trim tab is on, neutral flaps set, cow flaps are open, doors and windows secure, slowly advanced throttle, manifold, fuel flow and RPM check. So check manifold, check fuel flow and check RPM. They're all coming up nice and smoothly and full power. You can hear the, uh, the propeller biting and the RPM settling. And those horrible frame rates are giving me a very crap departure. Okay, so that's 90 knots. And I'm going to wait until 100 knots. Okay, there's 100 knots and nose coming up. There we go. See that shake? That shake? Okay, vertical um, positive rate gear up. And once we leave the area, we should... We're not we're not near stall speed at all. That's just some really weird shake on departure. I'll have to read up on that. Okay, unknown. Hey Lewis, is there any uh, sales at the A2A store? I'm new to flight sim. I just recently heard about A2A and looking for a good new plane to steer started with. Uh, start with a C172 if you've got nothing. Uh, start with a C172, unknown, uh, and and go through proper training with it. You'll really enjoy it. Okay, so throttling back 75%. Let's bring the the uh, RPM back down. Let's arrest this ascent rate. We can't go above 2,000 feet. Let's do a right-hand turn now. And let's zoom in on that flight one. There we go. That's that's what we need. Oh, not, not bank that much. Little bit of right rudder. Bring us around. Actually, yes, we can. Okay, let's bring those flaps up. We're above white, the white bar speed. And there is Torps on the food. And I'm just going to roll out. And there is... Oh, that's weird. There's a very long long field there. I love the colors though. Let's just recenter the view there. Okay, he's going to hand me over to approach fairly soon, so I've got to remember to to be ready for that. Uh, let's just trim. I'm just going to pull my my propeller. I'm going to pull my throttle down cuz I am already quite fast and I'm having to do a lot of trim here. There we go. So from this general point, from this general point, we want to then turn to the left, and we want to head out towards uh, uh, this point here, uh, Tango Oscar uh, 905, roughly. So we're going to make that turn now. And we're 1,900 feet, so let's just stick below. Um, we're trimmed very nicely, very smooth. The aircraft is, is really behaving very well right now, which is good. Frames are still a bit low, but again, we've got all of Torp that's loaded in, so... I haven't been over to Notodden in quite a while in the sim, so I'm hoping that scenery will still looks good. I remember some weird artifacting last time I was there. Anyway, so uh, and we're still we're still nosing up, so I'm just uh, 
Ooh, a little bit of turbulence. That's okay. Still keeping under two uh, under two thousand feet in our departure. I wish that Aerosoft would update Torp for V4. Maybe Scandinavian scenery isn't as popular as it could be. I just don't know. That's 2,000 there. We can't go any further. Let's just bring the propeller back even further. We're on almost 50% power here. Delta Victor, Delta, frequency change approved. Uh, monitor uh, target approach on 134. There's a mode 05, 05, great flight over. Uh, frequency change, the Faris. Uh, thank you very much for ATC. Good evening, uh, Delta Victor Delta. And I've heard those calls, uh, frequency change approved to Faris uh, in real life. It's quite nice to hear. Uh, good evening, uh, Faris Approach, uh, Delta Echo Hotel, Victor Delta, just crossing over Vidrosen, uh, 1,900 feet via VFR, uh, departing the area to the northwest. Delta Hotel, Victor Delta, just approach to the evening. Stay your intentions. Uh, intentions uh, VFR departure to Notodden, uh, full stop at Notodden uh, for Delta Victor Delta. Delta Victor Delta, Roger, will you be entering a control airspace or will you fly below 2500 feet? Uh, can remain, uh, actually, correction, uh, would like to fly up to 3000 for Delta Victor Delta. Uh, thank you. Uh, up to 3,000 feet or below uh, into the TMA for Delta Victor Delta. Okay, so he's approved me to climb up to a maximum of uh, 3,000 feet. And now, of course, that I'm VFR and he's... Uh, these controllers have no idea to handle how, how to handle VFR. Uh, to be fair, like, the tower controller asked me, right now it's pitch black in Norway, and he asked me, can you do VFR? And I'm like... Uh, Please, uh, we'll report to Nordhodden QNH 1011 and uh, the recommended uh, 30 for the runway, uh, Delta Victor Delta. And I don't really know where I am. Uh, uh, one question, I recommended runway uh, one two. Oh, one two. Okay. Uh, that's uh, runway one two for Delta Victor Delta. Thank you. Okay, actually, just keep 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 going this way until you hit that lake. All right. Okay, that's cool. So up to three thousand. So we are going to continue to climb. Let's just lean out a bit. Let's bring that down uh, the mixture to about seventy five percent. And actually, it's okay in VFR. We're just we're still uh, we're still on that magenta line. Actually, we can see that on the GTN seven hundred and fifty, and we can use that in VFR conditions. There's nothing to say we can't. Um, but as long as we keep looking out the window. Uh, hello, Joseph. How are you doing? Eh, uh, Joseph. Joe. Joe, how's it doing? How are you doing? You're back from America now, Joe. How was that, man? I missed you, man. I was in, uh, I was in East Anglia just last week. I missed you. You were much missed. Oh, I can start to feel some... That's that's turbulence now there. And now you can see that uh, we've cleared the torp scenery. Uh, our frames have come up and are much smoother now, so that's good. We'll ha hopefully have smooth frames for when we come down into the Todden. And I have a feeling that lake right there, I remember seeing that one in real life. I was actually on the left-hand side of that lake as I went over to the Todden. Uh, and I think that 
right there. Oh yes, that is a bit. That is a bit choppy. That is a bit choppy. We're experiencing some light chop, and uh, and that right there is an 18 knot crosswind. So that's a serious, uh, pretty serious crosswind there for. Yeah, there's no re there's no way I could have maintained 2,000 feet with that terrain <laughs> right there. Uh, I'm good, and yes, I got back on Tuesday last week and had a great time. Fantastic, good stuff. Uh, yeah, scenery does look uh, great. Dreams of Wings. It um, it's FTX Norway, and FTX Norway never disappoints. Beautiful aircraft, though. Okay, so now we're in the cruise. Let's take the landing light off. Um, and let's just... Ooh, wrong view. Let's just... Uh, 11 degrees Celsius. So we're, we're, we're still uh, easily far away, far away enough from icing that we don't need to worry about that. Um, give it a few more months and then you'll be, you'll be icing up quite nicely in Norway. So, and a bit of a simulation freeze there. Maybe it was loading in a Todden or something. And uh, that's 3,000 feet. We can't go above. But that terrain looks like it's uh, coming up to say hello. We've got to be careful of that. Keep keep some trimming. I can feel the uh, I can feel the crosswind though. Um, I think I think this next ridge is the ridge we go down into, and then we we go to we we can descend and fly along the valley and uh, go to the Todden from there. So um, I think I'm the only VFR aircraft in the area. I don't see anything else on the scope. I don't see anything else on the. Uh, Let's just make sure I don't continue ascending. Uh, if I just zoom out to say 12 nautical miles, uh, 24 nautical mile range on the the TCAS there on the the 650, and I don't see anything. So, um, and I like how there's two stickers over the tip tank gauge. So you can, they're they're definitely showing you that you don't have the tip tank uh, out on here. And I'm going to switch over to the the right tank now. Um, as we've drained uh, probably half a gallon maybe from the from there I upgraded my PC now I have an Intel i7 27k and a 580 class classified but it's not top of the line but still a lot better than what I had okay cool uh, f when you say a 580 you mean a GTX 580 or a Radeon uh, Joe because I, uh, I I'd say a, a GTX 5 580 is uh, a very a very old card by this point. Um, does FTX Norway come with a pronunciation guide to the place names, airport names? Ha! <laughs> Dreams of Wings. I wish. I wish. You're pretty much left in the dark on that one, Dreams. GTX. Okay, it's a GTX 580. Um, Alright, GTX 580. I'm going to have to look that one up because that, that sounds like an older card, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so yeah, coming down uh, in this valley, I remember this. I remember this lake here to the right. Actually, <coughs> excuse me, I remember this this terrain. Uh, yes, actually, it was just over there, via fart that I came into into the valley. Um, he is going to give me. Uh, he's. Let's just have a look on. Yeah, should be coming down into that valley fairly soon. And then uh, flying overhead, not totten, and then outbound, and then inbound on the localizer. So that's the plan. Uh, yeah, it's still pretty good. Okay, cool. Uh, it's like five years old, but I'm. It's I got it for free. Nice. Well, if you get it for free, you get it for free, don't you? So there we go. And uh, that's three thousand feet. And actually, I'm not terribly happy that uh, I'm going to turn to the left. Actually, to fly through this gap. Because that's that terrain is literally three thousand feet, and that is a strong sidewind. That's a strong sidewind. It's going to make our it's going to make our um, it's going to make our landing in the Notodden quite interesting. Um, yeah. Okay, coming across this lake and then down the valley, and you can see how even if even at uh, 
even at low power settings, this thing, I mean, if you bring the throttle, if you bring, sorry, if you bring the uh, propeller back, the, the, the RPM, this thing just rockets. Then again, like I said earlier in the video, I have a very light setup right now. I don't have much weight at all to talk of. So, and there, of course, is the valley. And at the end of the valley, there is Natodon. And there is the airfield. So we're going to be flying over that and then outbound for the localizer uh, of 2-1. Or 1-2, actually. Is it 1-2 or 2-1? Let me double check that. Uh, it's 1-2, yeah. Okay, so, and we're actually, as we fly to Notodon, he actually, we fly out of his airspace, so I'm actually 200 feet above where I said I would, but I'd, I'd rather be 200 feet above than 200 feet below, or else I'd be in the trees right there, so. Um, Darren, late to the stream, evening all, hello? Ah, uh, no, eight years. 580 is 10 years old. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, late to stream. Uh, how is the GeForce GPU? For me, unknown? Old? Uh, my, my... Oh, my word, this turbulence. This is interesting. All right, let's really throttle back now because we're now... This, this is our valley. So let's turn... Just maintain this here. Uh, we're and the turbulence is probably going to get a lot worse because it's, it's going to turn into a tailwind in a second. Um, so, how how old is it? Um, personally, my graphics card is the GTX 970, um, which is not as old as the 580. The GTX 580 is the one that um, Joe was talking about. So just descending, making sure I stay below 3,000 feet. I'm going to have to con maintain 3,000 feet as I fly overhead Natodon and outbound for the localizer. So now that uh, we've got Natodon in sight, um, um, far Uh, Faris approach, Delta, Victor Delta with you, 3,000 feet, uh, just coming overhead, uh, Notodon now uh, requesting flying over Notodon for the localizer 1-2. Uh, copy the winds on runway three uh, on the runway one two at Natodden. Uh Thank you very much, Delta Victor Delta. Okay, so that's pretty much us uh, ready to go. Uh, the localizer is uh, localizer's lock one one three, and that's one ten seven. So that is uh, nav one. Uh, Oh, what was that? That was uh, one ten seven, one ten seven zero. And that didn't change, which means that. Home frequency push nav. I'm not sure how that's working. Oh, I remember this terrain. <laughs> Do I indeed? Let's just keep outbound here. Actually, I did set the uh, the approach. Approach, load and activate. There we go. Yeah, I just got uh, wanted to drop drop in, stop in, and say hi. Yeah, thank you, Joe. That's very good to see you. 
Uh, is there any road crossing that? Is there? Isn't there a road crossing that runway? There is Bjorn. Um, there is Bjorn. I actually did uh, some video work. I stood next to the runway while uh, a, a DA40 was uh, taking off and landing uh, and flying past me. Um, and there is uh, traffic that goes across that runway. Yeah. Okay, I'm coming into. Uh, I have to fly inbound to Utvem, Utvem first. So actually, it's quite a long outbound, and then I turn around and come inbound. I'm actually going to do a bit of a teardrop approach. So, um, but I can really feel the the turbulence up here. But there's and the localizer, by the way, guys, is an offset localizer. So uh, this should be fun. Uh, I'm just still wondering how. I'm just still wondering how on earth that. Um, co uh, com frequency s forward slash push nav. I. I'm pushing it. And it's not doing anything. So, do love that instrument panel. Yeah, it's. I do love my gauges. Oh, okay. Anyway, so I've got I've got nav two. Anyway. Uh, one one three. And my plane is just constantly banking to the right. Okay, that is my localizer. And this is a pretty bad way of doing it, but I'm going to I'm going to turn around at Utvem and come inbound. Well, trying to stay at 3,000. But once we do that turn, we're going to have this sidewind. It's 15 knot sidewind right now. It really is pretty crazy. Okay, so while we're getting ready, uh, we should actually might as well just half close that in cruise. Uh, take off, climb, cruise, approach and landing. Autopilot is off. Fuel pump is on. Fuel selectors is desired tank. Fuel levels... Uh, just check the fuel levels are both fine. Um, the cow flaps are closed. Let's close up the cow flaps. Um, if over 4,000 feet lean, no. I'm going to set to nav one, also just in case it it is working and I'm not identifying that. Let's just also set my rough heading. Okay, I'm actually going to turn. I'm going to make my turn now. 14 knot tailwind. I'm above 3,000 now, but there's no aircraft in the in the area that I've identified. So. Make that turn. Hello, Gaza. Twigs ahead. <laughs> you bet. Or pine cones, pine needles, whatever your preference. I'm not going to be twiggist. Could be, could be some uh, misidentified pine pine cones and and pine needles out there. I'm sure this is Norway after all. Oh, for goodness' sake! I know there's terrain ahead, guys. Stop this. Okay. And actually, that does work. So nav one is working. I just I didn't think it was. And what is that? 
Oh, it's just a clump of weird trees. Okay, so uh, 3,000. Let's hold 3,000 now. And let's try to s let's try to stay on the localizer, Mantok. Stop this. Stop this foolishness. Stop being so silly. Okay. Forty-four people watching the stream. Oh, lol. Right, let's just try to not fool this up. Okay. Okay, two thousand, almost two thousand nine hundred feet, and wow, my goodness, just there we go. Four with a fourteen knot crosswind. That's kind of where we want to be now. There we go. And I can see the runway way off at the distance and I can see no Todd and Darren. No pressure then. Yeah, exactly. Well, just climb up to 3,000 and try to stick to that. I still haven't gotten a feel for the crosswind yet properly. You can see I'm dancing around on that, uh, on the localizer. Um, and if I really wanted to, I could set the DME and I, w I could get a DME readout. Actually, let's just do that. I believe that's this button here. There we go. Seven point. Okay, seven nautical m miles. Um, I'm not going to be able to do it now, but because I have complete visual all the way to the ground, I'm actually going to fly the glide slope. I'm going to do the glide slope manually. I'm going to start slowing down now. Okay. Mixture rich. I'm going to go props full. And I'm just going to pull, pull the power out as I begin the descent. And that does not look like 113. If I get this, if I get a second's chance, what on earth? What on earth does it look like Plan G is doing? Plan G looks way off. I got the Pappy lights anyway. Okay, so. I do a giveaway. I have nothing to give away. <laughs> what more do you want from me, my soul? Um, right, so we just we just dropped a ton of altitude there, so for some reason for some really crazy reason. No gauge is actually giving me an accurate localizer at all. That's ridiculous. This was entirely visual. I thought that gauge was actually doing me something, but it's not one. It's I set it correctly to the the right. Yeah. Okay. We. I'm gonna have to figure this out next time. I could land and and and. Yes, your soul would be great. No, thank you. Sorry, soul giveaway or riot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to think about flaps and gear, guys. So I'm on short final. Okay. Okay, landing light on. Let's give ourselves some flaps. Gear coming down because we're in the white speed. Uh, I'll give me... I'll give me 20 degrees flaps. And try not to hit the floor. I'm going to hold it 100 knots just until I get closer and flatten out my descent rate because I'm actually below the glide as you can see by the pappy. And I'm nice and trimmed. I'm a bit better on the trim now. And you can see the, off the, the offset threshold. Um, that's quite a severe offset threshold. But I'm going to 
actually land where the cars are supposed to be. Uh, no, there's a car, there's a car, there's a car! Ah! <laughs> Shh! Silence, you fools! And break. I think if you look at the manual of the uh, scenery, there's a certain frequency that you have to tune, which turns off the which which blocks the cars from coming across the the threshold, coming across the runway. And in real life, you basically the tower knows, um, and the tower turns on the the uh, the red traffic lights so that no one will cross the runway. So flaps coming up. Oh, I always click that because it's the other one. Landing light coming off. And I'll bring the strobe off now prematurely because I'm going to go to the taxi. Uh, I'm going to go to... Okay, approach landing. After landing, landing lights and taxis. Uh, landing and taxi lights is required. Flaps are up. Trim is neutral. Cow flaps open. Open the cow flaps. There we go. Excuse me. Ha. Huh. In my eagerness to follow the checklist, I missed the taxiway. Never mind. That displaced threshold had me fooled for a moment. Yeah, it does. It does. You look at it and you're like, hang on a second. What's going on here? Because... Uh, that's a very severely dis displaced threshold. Um, and if you're a small enough aircraft, uh, you should be able to not need them to, to pull the traffic. Well, no, they actually no, they do pull the traffic off the, the runway. Whatever's happening on the runway, they pull the traffic. But um, usually, if you're a small enough aircraft, you, you should be able to... Okay, so um, so now that we're now that we're here, let's turn off the the nav lights and the taxi light. Okay, so from here. Okay, let's just lean for ground operations here. Uh, here be park, please. Mm -hmm. Scan and land, 475, push and start approved, UNH 1012. UNH 1012, scan land 475. Okay. So we're just idling there on the ground. So, um, Nortodden is the new second base for Pilot Flight Academy. They now have, they now have a secondary base here at Nortodden as well as uh, at uh, Torp uh, Sonlifud, which is nice. So there should be a lot of little DA-40s flying in and out of here doing doing stuff. Um, so there we go, folks. Um, let me just see what things. Let's just debrief a little bit here. Uh, progress. Uh, complete flight. Complete flight. Negative 82 feet per minute on the descent. That, that wasn't really terribly good, to be fair, in a small aircraft like this. Uh, where did you get your GPS? So I got the GPS. It's uh, the Flight 1 GTN 750. So if I go Flight 1 uh, GTN uh, 750 complete. Uh, this right here is what this add-on is. So if you go to the Flight 1 software store and you type in Flight 1 GTN Complete Edition, GTN 750 and 650, the, it, it comes with the 750 and the 650 in one package and that is what you look, you're look you looking at right there, those two, those two touch panels. As you can see, A2A have allowed them to be fitted into the aircraft and you can see right here on the screen that I'm actually able to uh, touch 
the the surfaces of them all of these buttons are touchscreen buttons um, and I've actually I've been in an aircraft I was in a um, a Technum out of Jarlsberg uh, Eric Lund will know this there was a Texan out of Jarlsberg that had the 650 and it's exactly the same as in real life like the menus the buttons the noises that it makes it's exactly the same so if you know how to use the 750 and 650 in the sim it's basically the same as in real life and they're very intuitive like you don't really need to like learn how to use this GPS suite it just you 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 install it and you start clicking buttons you're like oh it's all laid out very clear very simple um, almost foolishly simple you sometimes catch yourself thinking like is this real uh, but actually it is so uh, very good add-on to have if you want to do uh, in you know in-depth um, IFR procedures in small aircraft like this uh, was CDI still on GPS so lock wasn't working thank you Warren um, I was going to debrief about this and this and that's why I've left the engine on um, I've not used the the GTN 650 that much at all and that is why I I wasn't quite sure about the CDI needle the CDI needle um, is is this yellow needle and that basically is your nav 1 needle your nav 2 needle is just the same if I actually take away okay I'm gonna take away the GTN 750 and 650 on the right there okay so now I've taken them out of the aircraft <sighs> okay so this is my this is my com 1 just here this is my nav 1 and this is my com 2 and my nav 2 so com so, so nav 1 should have been set to uh, 1107 so let's set that to 1107 and now we have the CDI needle moving and let's just set that to 113 now that that's set to 113 that should accurately track the localizer that's the frequency and the localizer it's an offset localizer so that should track I had it correctly set in nav 2 as you can see it's the same frequency in nav 2 and I had the degrees in nav 2 set so now that that's set if I go back to put in the, the 650 and 750 I still don't see a way of selecting the nav nav 1 panel through the 650 Yes, I uh, had it in NAV2, but the, the CDI set for GPS. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, it was set in GPS, yeah. No, I'm pretty sure it was in VLOC. I'm pretty sure all the time it was in VLOC. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure it was an issue here with 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 the 750. Um, I I probably wasn't doing this properly. Uh, if I go and fly that again, um, I it should work. Yeah, it's that CDI button you see you press. Um, click CDI button on uh, 750. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Warren. Uh, so in nav 1, yeah, uh, it had nav 2, yeah, so that's, um, I think the thing with flight sim, and it's a good thing as well as being a bad thing, is that we have so many aircraft at our disposal that we can fly and so many systems that we can delve into that we don't become very well versed in a particular system or a particular airframe, and in real life you do. In real life, you train on a DA-40 or a Cessna 172, and you know them quite well. Then you move on to something bigger, and you train on that, and you know that. Then you move into the airlines, and you may be flying a 737 for 5, 10 years, or your entire career, you might be flying a 737. You get to know it very well. In Flight Sim, we do everything. We just, dab we, we just dabble and delve into everything. So it, it means that you're just never as... Um, you're never as as fluent in things as you would like to be. 
um, unless you just fly that one thing all the time and ignore everything else, and then you're ignoring everything else that you want to do. So, anyway, uh, let's see what the what the what the stream is stream time is. Uh, one hour thirty five minutes. Um, I'm happy to do a circuit. Let's go up and do a circuit one more time. Let's just come off uh, Vatsim. We don't care about Vatsim at this point. Let's go up and do a circuit. Okay, so let's just delete. Uh, let's just go. Uh, can I delete that? I don't know. Let's go to the flight plan. See if we can. Is there a button where we can just delete the whole flight plan? Remove. Ooh, what was that? I didn't see that option. Remove. Remove. Invalid flight plan modification. Ooh. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Let's go back to the approach and see if I can unload that. Let's go lock the lock one two. There you go. That's probably what I should have been. GPS guidance is for monitoring and activate approach. Okay, so what did that do? That gave us that's that's the offset. That right there is the offset. That's what I should have had all along. You can see you can see the dotted line there is is the actual runway center line. I should have been flying the offset. Anyway, let's let's fly out that direction and try this approach one more time, shall we? We're only an hour and a half on stream. Um, okay, so now we knew we set that. We set that at uh, 113 degrees, so we should be good, right? Brakes off. And let's just spin ourselves around a little bit. And we'll do a run up because we didn't do a run up at uh, Torp. Uh, yeah, delete. Yeah, that's right. So, 35 people in the live stream. Uh, is there anyone here I haven't really uh, talked to much? Is there are there those people? Uh, is there anyone new to the stream? Uh, if you're new to the stream, um, I was streaming yesterday. Uh, I did my first stream with the Bonanza yesterday, and this is my second. So um, feel free to feel free to subscribe and hit that notification button. So every time you get videos, I should be releasing videos um, more frequently. 14 degrees Celsius. Okay, 1700 on the RPM. 15, 16, 17. Let's just make sure that our our gauges are all good. And let's do a mag check. Slight drop, a couple of hundred RPM. Let's do the right one. And again, slight drop in RPM, but all good. And let's just cycle the prop. One more time. Good. Let's bring it down again. About a thousand. Like so. Usually gets about eleven, twelve hundred is what you need to get moving. Miss this bird. Yeah. Not new, uh, but long time lurker since your B three seven seven vids. Are you serious, man? The B three seven seven vids is where it all began. I can't wait to get the B three seven seven back. Um, I, uh, of of any A two A bird, I yearn for that one the most. I do. Um, let's get onto the runway and. Uh, get the strobe on. I yearn for that, that aircraft more than any other, you know. I, I, I really miss my transatlantic transatlantic flights in the in the B three seven seven. On the stream since yesterday, uh, on the channel since one seventy two video saw your uh, you on the A two A forum. Okay, cool, Mo Mozoto. Um, yeah, the I'm actually working on them I'm actually in video editing right now on the most uh, the most recent PPL training video will be on um, 
runway, uh, uh, well, airport markings and ground movement. That's what the next PPL training video is going to be on. So uh, I'm video editing that right now, so that's fun. Um, we're going to be going up to 3,000 for this. And we'll turn around at these markings here. Yeah, I talk about it occasionally. I probably talk about it more than occasionally, to be fair. Um, okay, let's spin around and get centered up. And let's just put the flaps down. We need some flaps for this, because this is not long. That's about 15 degrees, roughly. Okay, mixture is in. Props are full. Um, oh. What was that? That was like a flash of light. Okay. Moving on. Pretending that didn't happen. Throttle full, rotate at 77 knots. Okay, I'm going to rotate at 77 knots and see what happens. Seventy-seven knots. There's that little shake after departure. Positive rate, gear up. And I'm going to keep the flaps down just for a bit more. Um, do a 90 degree turn to the right. Climbing at 90 knots. There's the runway. And then I'm going to do an almost immediate 90 degree turn again to the right. The terrain at Notodden does not give us much room for errors. So climbing again, just, just over 100 knots now in the climb. That shake, there's a topic about that in the forum. Okay, I'll have to read that because I have noticed it. I really have. That's an interesting little shake. Um, and I know the runway is offset, so actually I'm going to fly the offset and just climb above this terrain. We've definitely got the speed now to climb, so... And I'm going to bring the flaps in, because now we're okay. Beautiful aircraft, though, the Bonanza. Really nice. There's something about the shape. The shape of that just is beautiful. Okay, coming up to through 2000. I'm going to change the fuel tank back to the left, up through 2,000, coming to 3,000. Let's just level out at 2,500 and bring the propeller back to, bring, sorry, not the propeller, bring the power back to about 60%. And now, of course, I've popped above the, I've I've popped above the hills and immediately start feeling that turbulence again. So uh, it's a bit light at the moment, but still noticeable. Okay, let's just uh, bring the propeller down now. Let's bring that down to maybe 2400 RPM. Like so. Have that set. And I'm flying a little bit more than, than the offset just because I know that You can see that there. And I know that we still have a crosswind of 15 knots, so that's going to be, again, a bit of an issue. Okay, so for the... This is the RNAV. Oh, no, this is the localizer. Uh, if I now have the time, I can go to the approach, and I can actually show you the, uh, the offset localizer is 112. It's 112? Well, actually, no. Oh, this... Th stop this. Um, it says 112 on the chart, but Plan G says 113. And I am prepared, prepared to believe Plan G slightly more than 
the the Navigraph giant because Plan G takes all of its its navigation information directly from the P3D files. So if the P3D files say it's 113, then the charts, if the charts are off by a degree, I'm going to believe what the P3D installation says. Because I'm at the end of the day, I'm, I'm trying to replicate real life, but at the end of the day, I'm still flying in a simulator. And if the simulator says it's 113, I'm just going to go with 113. Um, so that's, that's what that is. Okay, Carlos. They said, the shake is the spinning wheels after it take off. If you apply brakes, the shake stops. Uh, no way! That's so cool! The shake is the spinning wheels after take off. I'm so trying that. Actually, I'm going to do a touch and go. The next... Uh, oh, yeah, I'm going to do a touch and go just to see what that's like. Okay, so uh, you can see I'm 7.3 nautical miles out. Um, and at 13.3 nautical miles, I can be at 6,000, 4,250 at 9.5. So I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna go to 4,200, climb to 4,250 for 9.9.5. 4,250. Nine point five, so it's a less than an I wonder if they modeled the gear motors fighting against the force. Uh if if um Lewis is still in the chat, he's one of the A two A he's on the A two A team. Lewis, if we have a question, uh M Mazoto has a question in the in the stream for you. If you're still listening. Okay, so at this point I'm going to get ready to make my right hand turn for 905. Okay. Okay, bam. 200. 250, right. Almost there. Almost there. Okay. That is the correct altitude to be. And I'm just crossing the localizer coming inbound. And at 9.5 nautical miles, we begin our descent. Coming through that localizer, gonna come back. Yeah, that crosswind really pulls you, pulls you very quickly off that localizer. I'm gonna overcompensate there just for the wind. I mean doors. Okay, just write your question out fully in the chat there so that if Lewis is answering, if Lewis is listening. Someone else, uh, once once this video is uh, uploaded to YouTube after I finish streaming, if you add the comment to the, the YouTube video itself, uh, I'm sure someone will, will come and comment later on. So, Okay, so there we go. Now we're looking correct. Now we're looking correct. And I begin the descent now. 8.3 let's begin the descent um, and it even should even the chart should even tell us what is a good descent rate is at 100 knots 730 uh, about 730 at 100 knots and we're way above 100 knots and we've just climbed a little bit so that's bad um, let's just pull that back let's go props full and slow ourselves down here so the next we're looking the next distance readout is 6.5 and we need to be 2900 oh my goodness so 6.5 6.5 actually 6.5 yeah 2940 and so we're a bit we're still a bit too high and we're off again but no matter we're descending much more rapidly so we should capture that that, glow, that uh, glide slope again. So that is 2,900 there and 5.5. .5, so we're a little, we're we're a nautical mile ahead of ourselves. So let's try and capture that up. So at 4.5, we need to be 2,070. 4.5, 2,070. So we've got 500 feet to lose. 400. 300. 
200. 4.5. And we're almost there. Okay. We need to start slowing down now. Now let's arrest our descent rate. Just going to pull the, pull the propeller right back there. There we go, about a hundred knots. We need to be at a hundred knots. Uh, so next one is f is 2.5 actually. No, that's minimums. So from now on, we're basically just continuing our descent. Localizer's looking much nicer now though. Now that we actually have that set up, that's looking much nicer. Okay, so, okay, lights are on. Really need to start. Okay, flaps going down. And gear going down. Okay, flaps are full. There's 100 knots. Trim, 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 trim. Trim, 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 trim. 90 knots. Arrest that uh, deceleration with a bit of throttle and a bit of trim. Okay, now we're here. And remember, this is going to be a touch and go because we want to see that, that rattle. At this point, we can see a lovely, lovely uh, pappy light coming up to greet us. And this is generally, and, and now, of course, the localizer has disappeared because we're so close. This is generally the pro profile you would see with this, with this offset localizer. So you would get to this point and you would then turn on to the runway center line. And that's normal. That's normal for an offset localizer like that. It's it's the weirdest thing to imagine to try to to see this in real life to 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 do an offset localizer feels very unnatural. All right, see if we could just kiss this. Okay, that was a kiss. Okay, full power. And brakes. Yeah, that did that. that. Yeah, to be fair, that did stop whenever I I braked. So, flaps flaps and gear coming up, full power. Let's do a left hand circuit. It is doable. I've seen it done in real life. We have to climb. Oh, trim, 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 trim. There we go. Above a hundred knots now. That's fine. You do have to. Uh, you do have to gain some uh, some length over the lake though before you turn left and then and then go on the downwind because of that that terrain there thank you Carlos that, that was fun that was really fun and I'm gonna make my left turn now above a thousand feet and I'm actually gonna keep the left hand turn going I'm gonna do 180 degrees that's a 30 degree bank roll there 180 degrees all the way around and keep the climb happening. There we go. Make sure that sure that that's a smooth turn as well. Looking at our uh, our ball indicator there. And now we're 1700 that should be fine. Let's just throttle back now. We can keep the the propeller pitch at full. We won't be up here long because we know that the Bonanza is a fast a fast lady. We don't really need 2,000 feet. And this is pretty much the profile I remember them flying uh, with with a circuit to the north end of the field. Um, I'd say maybe 2,000. And they did actually extend their downwind, their, their downwind leg quite far over, over the edge of this hill just here at Notodden when I was there. See, you're really not that far away. You really should be at 2,000 for this. But but I'm almost I'm almost over the terrain now anyway. So okay, so this will be a full stop, and this this will be the the end of the stream. Hello, Moggy. I'm sorry, Moggy, if you're tuning in for for the first time. We've 
We've been live for an hour and 55. Excellent. So when I land, hopefully we should be almost dead on two hours. Which is a nice stream for a weekday evening, don't you think? A two-hour stream, that's uh, that's quite good. And it is 9.30pm. I do need to go grab a shower and then turn in for the evening, so... Okay, throttle back. Throttle back and uh, just bleed some speed. And start the turn. That's a good profile for the runway to be there. Uh, kick in a little bit of rudder. You see that descent rate just drop away. Nice 30 degree bank. There's the runway. No worries, I was driving uh, in ETS 2. Oh, okay. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. That's bad. Now I'm above profile. I took my eyes off and onto my stream. Ah. Oh. I'm I just messed it up. I descended too quickly. Okay, let's dump flaps. Now we're at, we're in white line speed. Let's dump flaps and get ready to dump gear on the on the last minute. Just trim. As those flaps come in, those those big flaps, let's get some trim going. Okay, let's dump gear. Gear coming down. We're a bit high on the profile, but we should be okay. Still got a two knot crosswind from the right hand side. There we go. Trim, 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 trim. We're still slowing down despite the fact we're descending, so we've got a lot of drag happening here. And let's try and make this the best touchdown. little bit more trim. Trim is so important on touchdown, it's so helpful. If you're not trimmed right, it you can it can really suffer. Okay, over the wires. Pull and flare. That's what I'm talking about. And brakes. And flaps up. And uh, let's get the landing off. The taxi we can leave on. We take the strobe off though. Thank you, Carlos. Yeah, no, that was probably the best. That was definitely the best landing of the evening. And I'm really glad actually I, that I went up again and retried that offset localizer just to show you guys what that feels like. Um, that's a really weird kind of profile to come at a runway sideways and it feels very unnatural for anyone on, on flight sim who always does you know uh, commercial aviation with you know their PMDG or FS labs or stuff and they they fly into these bigger airports you'll never ever get the experience of an offset localizer and I definitely say to anyone who who loves flight sim if you've got the chance jump into a small aircraft like this and Go to those airfields around the and uh, around the world that that are out of the way and have some quirky things and just practice. Uh, fly offline and just practice. Uh, there's plenty of videos out there to help you. There's a number of videos on my YouTube channel here of of uh, there's, there's some strange approaches that that you don't normally do in bigger aircraft. Um, I need to update some of my theory videos and I hopefully she'll be doing that with the PPL training series uh, quite soon um, as we develop that series. There's only f about four or five videos in the series so far but of those um, there'll be some more coming out soon and I really want to make those regular so um, I'm looking forward to, to getting regular videos out. I always say that. I always say that. Um, and sometimes life is life, it just never works out properly, but that's just the way things are. Right, so I'm just going to go, um, I'm going to pull the throttle and then pull the mixture um, and then wait for the propellers to stop. It was interesting, they kind of, they came to a stop and then they bounced backwards. So you can really see, uh, turn off the fuel pump before we flood the engine, thank you. Um, and you, the propellers went and and stopped and bounced backwards, so you can really see actually uh, that Accusim Accusim is 
um, actually modeling the, the pistons actually turning in the engine. And if one of the pistons is, it runs very roughly, you'll actually see that and you'll start to hear it and then you'll start to see the propeller won't actually do do things properly um, and it's and it's really really well modeled so just turn that off there and turn turn those lights off there let's just open the door and what we'll do is we will pause track IR there just put my put my joystick over there let's just move things out of the way Whew, I'm tired I need to go grab a shower and go to bed it's a weekday. Gonna be up tomorrow morning. Anyway, uh okay, take the headphones off. Uh the door is open, that's fine. And what we will do is uh so the shutters are closed, that's fine. Let's turn off the battery and the alternator. Let's put the pitot cover on. Ooh it has jacks! I never knew it had jacks. Oh I just figured that out. Oh my goodness, it's a little oil drum. Dude. That's well modeled. I like that. Look, it's got like dirt textures and everything's on. That guys, A to A, stop spoiling us. I like how it's just tr it's inter I like how it's interacting with the ground just there, you see. <laughs> That's cool. Uh oh, oh, actually towing. There's towing. Let's tow it. Let's tow it. Let's tow it. Forget this. Let's tow it towing oh yeah 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 I, you have to use your oh, look at when you tow it it makes the door I think you have to use a, a front yeah there you go you have to use a front a front view get out of the aircraft and let act to be fair let's close the door it's um actually let's, let's just turn my track higher on because I want to look over around me to my left. Let's tow it into that hangar there. See how fast can you tow it? That's probably the fastest tow speed. This is pretty cool here. Yeah, compression. That's it. Mozo tow. So we're just going to tow it into this hang. Oh, there's someone in the hangar. Okay, never mind. Let's tow it into that parking spot just there. Let's just push it forwards. And usually you'd have a little tow bar thing that you'd be you'd be using. This has to be one of the best features that 8away offers. Uh, uh, and I know that sounds stupid, but to be fair it is because it just adds that immersion to to having to owning a small aircraft like this. And I'm just going to I'm going to shove it there actually. Um and I'm going to turn off the tow. Uh, now I'm going to put the tie down the wheel chocks and the control locks. Let's just pull the... Oh no, you push forward, I think. Oh no, you need a person. Here we go. Um, you need a person in the plane to engage the control lock and then you empty the plane. Because realism. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching. That was a fantastic... I, lo I just l really, really enjoyed that video so much. Um, that was so much fun. I'm really looking forward to doing more with the Bonanza. So let's just see uh, what's going on on the stream here. So we've still got, still got a fair amount of people. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, I'm going to call it a day there and go and grab a shower and, and uh, be on later. And I'm hoping to get a, a, a repaint, a couple of repaints for this. Because I'm going to be spending a lot of time in this aircraft. Um, so please uh, feel free to tune in later. We'll be doing some more things uh, as, as time goes on. Uh, but uh, for those of you who haven't, please just uh, subscribe. And uh, and just keep keep up with what's happening on the YouTube channel. So thank you very much, guys. And good evening. <laughs>